I'm Vanelli. Welcome to another edition of the five P's from Click to Print. Today, what I'm going to do is take you through um, the, the the full five P's of what I did to create this special piece called the Aviator. Now, the five P's again are plan, photograph, process, post, and then print. Now, for this particular piece, the planning part was kind of simple. You know, I knew we wanted to work with like a World War II type outfit, so. We, we had the special authentic World War II goggle, the headdress, and of course the scarf itself, and then we had a great model amber to work with. Now, to get this shot, uh, what we decided to do was shoot it on a white backdrop. So this way, extracting her from the image we're gonna, it was going to be a little bit easier because we wanted to put it on to a, um, a black and white type image or a sepia color, so the white would work perfect with it. Now, we were in luck that week because there was also an air show happening. So my son Alec and I went out and we photographed all these World War II planes so we had enough uh, footage to work with all the way through. Now, for the lighting system, what we used was the high key from, from um, uh, Lasolite. And what that is, is you stick these, the, the strobes inside the light box itself and then the entire area lights up. It was a six foot by seven foot backdrop and it's a beautiful white with no shadows. Now the lighting we used for the main light of course was Westcott and the continuous TD5 lights are perfect because we were able to see what the uh, the shadows and all the highlights were going to be dropping off onto the model instantly so it was like a no-brainer type shoot. Now eventually what we're going to do is use several, several different models throughout this series so once we have that set up it's easy just to bring a model in, have her dressed, take the shot, bring in the next one. So it's very easy the way we had the, the photography part of it. And then on to the processing part. Now of course we use Photoshop and we use Lightroom, but I have to admit the two pieces of software that really played a huge role in this is On One Software and Nick Software. Now I have to admit I'm a junkie when it comes to uh, plugins and when it comes to filters. Now. My philosophy on this is very simple. Why reinvent the wheel? These guys came out and they knew exactly what we need to work with, so they did all the legwork and created all these plugins for us. And the neat thing about it with both of those, those software companies is we're able to create our own presets. And by creating our own presets, it's going to keep a consistent look throughout the entire series. Now, people keep asking me, of the two softwares, Nick Software and On One, which of the ones, if you only could have one, which would you pick? I have to admit, that's like asking me to choose between my mother and my father. It doesn't work that way. So I have to use both of them in my workflow, and they're a very intricate part of what I'm creating. Now, the, the next P, of course, is the posting part. From here, of course, I use SmugMug. Now, the reason why I use SmugMug is I'm able to sell my prints online. I'm able to use an online photo gallery. Um, if I want to incorporate that into my WordPress site, it's very easy to put all of that in there. And of course, people that want to go onto the site can click on um, a share part and they can share it with their friends, friends and family. They can put it up to Facebook. There's a lot of neat features behind SmugMug. The other thing you can do is export it to Facebook, Flickr. Um, you could use, you can export it to an email. So the uh, the posting part of the five P's is really to show you how to elaborate or how to get your post or your image out there onto the net. And then of course the final P is the printing. Depending on the piece that you're using depends on what medium you want to print on. Now for this particular piece it looks great on a metal print. And Metal Mural is one of the companies I love to work with. Now when I shot this in my mind I visualized three panels going across and I want it to be roughly four feet across, about maybe uh, two and a half feet high, almost three feet. So by keeping it in the two-thirds format that came right out of the camera, it was very easy for me to do this. So all I have to do is trim it out to a, something like 15 inches by 30 inches, set it off the metal mural, and I'll have three images going across, and it'll be a perfect print all the way through. Another company I like to work with is Art Artistic Photo Canvas. So for, again, for this particular print, putting it on canvas gives it that old, rustic type look, and it was something that maybe could have been shot during World War II. Another company which is really work good to work with is Bay Photos. So if I need this on luster, or if I needed it on a metallic print, that's the company I would go to. A couple other companies are uh, MPIP, 
MPEG Pro, and of course Miller Lab. Now, if this piece wasn't an art piece, if it was something, let's say for my son's birthday party, that I just needed to get out there quick, there's nothing wrong with going to Walmart or working with, let's say, uh, Acker, Acker Drugs Drugstore or maybe a CVS drugstore. You know, it's a very inexpensive way to have them print uh, mass productions. And then the final one would be, of course, printing it yourself. Now, I'm fortunate to have the Epson 9800. So if I wanted to print this particular piece on, let's say, a, a nice uh, artistic rag type print to where it comes off to where, where the texture and it just adds to the image itself, I have that option too. So again, the five P's are plan, photograph, process, post, and then print. Now with the tutorial today, I'll take you through each of those phases. So let's get started. In this lesson, what we want to do is remove the background layer from the pilot, and we also want to work on fixing this little area here on the airplane. Now by removing the background, the white area here, we'll be able to start working on the comp composite of this actual image. Now the easiest way to get rid of the background is we're going to go up to Filter, On1, and we're going to use On1's Mask Pro. Now this is kind of a simple um, background for, for Mask Pro to work on. So let's make sure we're under the uh, Erase mode. I'm going to select the Magic Wand tool. Under View, let's do Composite so we can see the airplane. Now if I just click, click on the white, notice what's happening. I'm able to see what's happening in the background. So this gives me a really good visual. Good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Now keep in mind we already we already said uh, we were going to make this into a black and white image. So for me to get really nitpicky on all of this, it's really not going to make a difference once we start to convert the uh, the actual image itself to a black and white or to a different color. Good. Now at any time, like that, I made a mistake, just press Control z on a PC, Command-Z on a Mac, just to undo your last change. Good. And let's see. I really like where everything is looking. Now just to make sure that we got everything set, we're going to go to View, Mode, and then go into Mask. So right here, it selected the goggle. So let's click on the Brush Tool. This time make sure it's under the restore mode and just paint back in that area to the mask that we want. And we look around everything else. Zoom out. Good. Everything else looks really good. Get a little up in here. That's it. View. Back to composite. Great. And that part is down. Let me just make sure that down here is select the oh, wrong one. Control Z. Good. Let's make sure the Erase tool is selected. That's it. Great. File. Save and Apply. And now we're back inside Photoshop. So, just by doing a real simple, what, about 30 seconds, 40 seconds inside Mask Pro, we were able to get rid of the background, and now we have the airplane to work on. So from here, I'm just going to hide that layer for now. Now for the airplane, I'm going to press Control T to transform it, and we're going to expand it just a little bit, right about there. Double click. Now one thing we have to be cautious on, I'm going to just click on this here to show you. Notice it's selecting all the way outside the box. That's because when we transformed it, what we're not seeing, and I'll move some over, is the airplane itself is larger than the canvas size. So, what we want to do, and control D, deselect it, I want to use the crop tool, and let's get rid of that just so it doesn't haunt, come back to haunt us in some of the filters that we're about to apply. Good. Now, to clean up the airplane, let's get rid of that layer. I want to get rid of this area here, so let's zoom in a little bit tighter. Uh, the tool I'm going to use is the pen tool, and I just want to make a couple quick clicks. One two, three, say four, five, six, and seven. Good. 
back to the pen tool and I want to add some anchor points right about here bring it in this looks good click here bring it over that's it and that looks good now under the paths I'm going to right mouse click on the working path make it a selection and give it a one pixel feather that's it good now making sure I'm on that airplane level or layer rather I want to press control or shift control I on a PC command shift I on a Mac to inverse of the selection and now I want to create a layer mask just by clicking on the layer mask icon and notice what that did was it punched out a hole here so the next step what we have to do is use a lasso tool making sure we're selecting the plane we're going to just draw a loose selection all the way around the sky because that's what we're going to use to fill in that area good control J on a PC command J on a Mac to copy just that selected area click on the move tool and let's move it into place now by dragging it underneath the airplane it's going to let us let's move this out of the way it's going to let us um, fill in that hole right in here great good click on the top layer control E on a PC command E on a Mac and that's going to flatten the top layer with the bottom layer now again just be sure I double click notice what it did some of that is still on the outside of the canvas so to be on the safe side once again let's use the crop tool drag double click now if I click on it notice everything's inside the canvas area so we're set control D to deselect it and now we're off to our we're off to a, a great start we just removed the background layer from the uh, pilot, fix the airplane here, and now we're ready for the next step.